What's up guys, it is day three over here on this remote Bahamian adventure. You can see we are on some remote islands, all primitive gear that we will be using. And I'm gonna be doing voiceovers so you guys can see what's going through my mind. We're gonna be sending it to some wild terrain and some wild areas, so do not go anywhere. And we're gonna be getting into some big fish. Welcome back underwater, everyone. Now we're gonna get in right where we left off from part two. And uh, if you haven't seen those videos, be sure to check them out. I'm using this homemade Hawaiian sling and you see me lining up on this hogfish right away. And that's ideal what you want to have happen. Taking your time, lining up the spine shot or the stone shot so the fish doesn't tear up the reef, he doesn't have a chance of escaping, and you land your fish on one dive, and that is perfect. So now we're scouting out multiple spots, and ideally whenever I do this, I usually just free shaft, and that's where I have just the Hawaiian sling with just a metal shaft. You can see it at work right here lining up a shot on a mangrove and when you're shooting smaller more um, controllable fish this is the perfect way to spear uh, because you can reload quickly um, and it's really easy to get in and out of the water with rather than a giant pole spear or um, the homemade sling with a lot of line um, and you could see me braining this fish even though it's a smaller fish I could handle it but I always love braining my, and bleeding and gutting my fish before they go in the boat I don't know, there's a big cave here that I saw earlier that was nothing in. He may have went in there. It's like over here. So what we're talking about is a giant Kuber. It's like a 35, 40 pounder. Uh, I saw him spook into this cave and this is the downside of using the Hawaiian sling. When you stick your head in a hole, it is hard to have your sling preloaded unless you're drawn back and with that having happened you have to have a lot of space um, but you can see me I'm just checking out this cave kind of looking where this fish might have come from and you'll see it here in just a second and it was a monster you could see it really up close right there comes out peeks his head around and if I had the pole spear I might have been able to land a shot um, and you'll hear us talk about this at the surface he, he came towards me and he went to the opening over here. But this fish was way too smart. He took off to a different part of the reef. And now when we were looking for him, we found a section of the reef, reef that holds a lot of mangrove snapper. And we kind of decided this earlier in the day uh, when we were starting to get some mangroves. That's what we're targeting today. Uh, we wanted some grouper or some, uh, sorry, some snapper nuggets and these are all perfect size mangroves there's the occasional bigger ones um, and you can see me kind of lacing these guys up and what I end up doing is I end up skewering them on my spear now I grab my knife I brain them and I just leave them on my spear I don't highly advise this unless you um, are for sure there's no barracudas or sharks around and there weren't any at this point uh, but wait till later on you'll see that something does come around and it makes me end up putting all my skewered, skewered fish um, in the boat. But I got one on the sling and then sure enough, here comes a hogfish. I got this one guy on the sling. I didn't want the boat to come over because it's a little shallow here. Uh, I didn't want it, the boat to come and back, like going back and forth. So I just kept the fish on me. Like I said, not highly advisable, uh, but if you kind of know what you're doing, you know the area, it is okay. Uh, line up a shot on this hogfish. Now this is a good shot. I don't know how it came off. Um, I think whenever it got hung up on this fan, it kind of gave him some slack and he slipped off and the barb went down and he just slipped right off. Now he went in this hole um, and that happens, but I end up doing a little bit of scouting, seeing if there's any exits or entrances on this hole and I don't see any and I decide to just reach in there barehanded without shooting the fish and one thing you want to do is make sure you check the hole and I did it on just a previous dive just before this. Um, Make sure you make sure it's, there's no eels or lionfish. There was a lionfish, but he was kind of off to the side. I kind of scoot this guy out. He's pretty much dead for the most part, um, but I still end up braining him at the end. Grab all my stuff, head to the surface, and um, you'll see how I brain these hogfish here in just a second. And yeah, there's a nurse shark. Not too worried about those guys. I'm more worried about reef sharks and kudas. Um, but this is a solid hogfish. Uh, another one to add to the uh, or the um, fish nugget fillet job that we're gonna do later. So we keep bouncing around to these uh, big reef structures, and they're just absolutely loaded with mangrove snapper. Um, I make a drop, look in this cave. They're just everywhere, and it's really easy to get um, 
to get confused on what's the biggest one so I kind of just have one set in my mind I take this shot even if a bigger one shows up otherwise you're just gonna be bouncing back and forth and not be able to shoot by the time you come up and you run out of air so good idea is to lock in on one and target that one and go for that one and that's what I did on that drop so now here we go doing the same thing another mangrove cave and uh, I see that one you can see it's like dead center and I ended up missing uh, and this is a kind of a long played out clip but I just wanted to see, show you guys that it's not all you know butterflies and rainbows I do miss uh, here and there and uh, you can see Alan he does the the thing I was just talking about it's hard to pick out one so he's dialing in on one then probably a bigger one came by and then another bigger one came by and then it, that one was gone and then he's like alright I'm gonna settle with the smaller one and that just keeps bouncing around in your mind and by that time you end up just unloading your spear and heading up to the surface oh God, there's so many <laughs> there's so many Get distracted. Right. I'm trying to pluck one big one so on this drop I do just that and you can see we're not diving really deep stuff and this is great because you can reload you get multiple opportunities you can take your time make sure you land good shots um, and make sure you're selecting bigger fish uh, and that's what I do on this drop I kind of have that fish in the dead center picked out lace them right through the gill plate and that's how you get good and that's why I love this sling is because I can just grab that mono and just pull the fish right to me especially on a smaller fish like this and it's the same deal as always I choke up on the knife so I have good precision brain the fish bleed them and toss them in the boat so we get back to similar cave structure um, loaded with mangroves under these little caves and you just want to pick and choose the biggest ones uh, that's exactly what I do on this dive go down take my time and I stay drawn back waiting for the biggest one to come by sure enough he comes right into me turns I lace the shot uh, and I pull this guy into me and I brain him and like I said I didn't want to bother with having the, the boat come back and back and forth and just pick up fish non-stop so I end up just sticking him on my spear I brained him first so he's not fluttering around or anything. Stick him on my spear and then load up again because I know the mangroves are just flocking to this commotion going around. Make another quick drop. Same little cave structure. Here's a another one I line up on. And really the best one that gives me a shot. Same deal. Pull and the best I wouldn't be able to do this with free shaft. So I pull the fish in and you can see I didn't want to grab my knife. Because I just, you know, was like, hey, I, I, you know, I just didn't want to bother with it. So I grabbed the spear. You can also brain the fish with the spear. And then whenever I skewer this guy, I just went right through his eyeballs. And then strung him up on the spear. And I'm trying to go for a hat trick. I want to get a third mangrove on sling. And it honestly doesn't go any better than this. This is what you want to have happen every time. So check this out. I have them all skewered up. This is probably the biggest one of the three, and I absolutely rolled this guy. But, like I said earlier, there are predators around that you need to be conscious of, and here comes a barracuda. Now, nothing is stopping this guy from just jolting and taking a couple kicks or one kick and just cutting one of these things in half. And he knows it's an opportunity for food, so I, I know this is a cue. I need to get these fish in the boat as soon as I can before this guy gets you know gets any good ideas and tries to make a meal out of one of them or possibly cut me and I could you know it's an easy way to lose a finger if you're doing something like this so if you see a fish get your fish in the boat you guys I just hopped in the boat and we are absolutely crushing it look at this we got a very very healthy looking box and we got my dad Alan and Walter in the water and uh, I think they're trying to dig something out of the out of a reef. But yeah, we are uh, we are getting in some good hogfish, and uh, we really wanted to uh, get some snapper nuggets. So that's why we're doing all these uh, spearing all these mangroves. And I'll tell you, if you want to get good at Hawaiian sling, try spearing mangroves. And they're usually everywhere up and down the Florida coast. So you, if you find a spot where there's some mangroves, and they only got to be 10 inches, these ones that we're going after are like 13, 14, uh, occasional 15, but 
if you guys get the chance to spear mangrove snapper, that will get you real good real fast at um, accuracy, whether you're using spear gun or Hawaiian sling or pole spear. So we're back at it again, similar reef structure. Alan makes a drop, and this is critical. You'll see why it's so good to buddy dive when you're doing the Hawaiian sling. He made a good shot in this fish, but I don't know how, but somehow it got off, went through his hands, but I'm right there, down there with him, having my eyes on the fish, so he has time to go up, get a breather, reload, and I'm taking another shot on the fish, and same deal. This guy somehow gets off. I'm trying to get a hold of the fish, but he goes up in this cave, holes up, rocks up in this cave, and Alan's already at the surface, having an aerial view, knows exactly where it is, um, and we both are ready to go. He's actually more ready than me because he's been at the surface reloading, getting a breathe up. Now he's ready to dive here in just a second, and that's critical, especially when you're using the Hawaiian slings because you do have a lot of tear-offs, but once you stick a fish, it's a high chance they're going to rock up in a cave. That's exactly what this one does. Easy layup shot for him. And he gets it right in the cave, and I'm right there looking at him just in case it does the same thing. If it tears off or it's a missed shot and he darts to another cave, I have an aerial view, and he can, same thing, get up at the surface, reload while I'm taking off after the fish. Only took three shots to get him down. <laughs> God. Nice. And so, guys, here's another prime example, and this is so cool because this is my dad and his old dive buddies that would... Hawaiian sling and they grew up doing this and I used to watch them do this when I was a little kid and I would see them shoot grouper and all this stuff when I'm just floating at the surface not able to dive down yet um, but this is a prime example of them working together as a team they're on the reef my dad just made a shot in this hogfish um, he was underweighted so he couldn't get all the way down so he was struggling with that a little bit um, but this fish goes right up the reef sure enough there's another diver i look at him i just let him have it alan gets another shot in the fish good buddy diving my dad's right there to follow up just in case alan got him but that's really cool getting a chance to see these guys in action um they were beasts back in the day and that's kind of what i had to look up to um and same deal I make a drop under this cave. They sent the young gun down there to get up in this cave to see where this hogfish went. And I look up in here and I see him kind of just the top of the fish. I know Walter is has a really good shot on him. And right there, he takes a shot. And I don't know if he has the fish or not. So I get out of the hole, look over on the other side, look up. I see Walter doesn't have it. But I look over and I see my dad drawn out. He was able to see the fish. My dad shot him. My dad shot him. My dad shot him. And he ended up chasing it down and got a shaft in it. And uh, we got the last and a solid hogfish for the day. It was really exciting to watch these guys um, in action again, just like I did whenever I was growing up. <laughs> nice. We're going to take out the scraps. <laughs> I, I was looking at him in the cave and I, I was looking at him when you shot him. That's sweet. Heck yeah. Perfect. Right where you're aiming. Hey, is my GoPro running? Oh, sweet. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed that. That was an absolute mission. We had to send it really far, but it was so worth it in the end. And I'm so happy I could take you guys with me. If you haven't seen day one or day two of this trip, be sure to check up in the corner. If you're not already, definitely subscribe. It is free and you get to see content, content like this every week. And give me a thumbs up on this video and I'll see you next week for another adventure. Who knows where we'll be, but I will see you next week. Later.